Shalom, everyone. I have put up several videos and mirrored documentaries regarding the work of Ron Wyatt on this channel. I think that he has done great work. Um, to be clear, he was the administrator of the Father Yahuwah's work in some very important regards. And one of those things was finding the Ark of the Covenant in Jerusalem beneath the site of the crucifixion in January of 1982. In addition to finding the Ark of the Covenant there, there was also Messiah's blood on the lid of atonement. Okay, so some of the videos on this channel which covers that very subject are Ron White, Yahushua's blood on the mercy seat, also Ark Files, the Ark of the Covenant, also um, the testimony of his sons, Danny and Ronnie Wyatt, and also uh, Ron Wyatt, Testimony of Discoveries. And the reason why I'm talking about this is because recently I came across some verses in the book of Second Baruch, which I want to bring out and I want to share because I think that they are just, just awesome, for lack of a better way to put it. And it, it, is, uh, it tells what's going on at that time. And also, it's a prophecy regarding the Ark of the Covenant remaining where it was placed in Jerusalem. So, the way... Now, first of all, Baruch was a scribe of the prophet Jeremiah, introduced in the Standard Canon in the book of Jeremiah in chapter 36. And he is discussed in several other places in the book of Jeremiah after that. Okay, so the book of Second Baruch can be found in... Sefer, and the Sefer contains all the books of Standard Canon plus 22 extra biblical books, Second Baruch being one of them. Now, Second Baruch is just a fantastic book. It's got, it's just got some really compelling, interesting prophecy in it. Um, so what's going on, the, the, the way that the book of Second Baruch starts is, this was in approximately 586 or 587 B.C., and Yahuwah comes to Baruch and tells him to get Jeremiah and others that are like himself and remove themselves from the city because he is about to bring judgment on it. And he is bringing judgment because his people, he says that in former times, kings forced his people into sin, but in these cases... That was not the case, and he, and they were actually forcing the kings to sin. So he was very upset, and he was bringing judgment. But he tells his people in, in uh, Baruch, Jeremiah, and a few others, get up, get out of here, judgment's coming. Okay, so the verses that I'm going to read are from chapter 6, chapter 6, verses 2 through 10. So I'm going to read these verses, um, but also I'm going to include these verses in the description box below for you to read on your own. Um, as well, I'm going to include links to two excellent teachings on the Father's name and the Son's name. The teaching on the Father's name is called Restoring the Creator's Name, Hashem Revealed. It's an hour and ten minutes long. And the teaching on the Son's name is entitled What is His Son's Name? It's an hour and 48 minutes long on the name of Yahushua. And both of these teachings are by the channel Messenger of the Name. Okay, so I'm going to get into reading this, and then uh, we'll discuss it briefly. Okay. So, after Baruch is now out of the city, this is where this picks up. And this has to do specifically with the Ark of the Covenant. So that's why I'm bringing this out. Second Baruch, chapter 6, verses 2 through 10. And I was grieving over Sion, and lamenting over the captivity which had come upon the people. And lo... Suddenly a strong ruach raised me and bore me aloft over the wall of Yerushalayim. And I beheld, and lo, four angels standing at the four corners of the city, each of them holding a torch of fire in his hands. And another angel began to descend from heaven and said unto them, Hold your lamps and do not light them until I tell you, for I am first sent to speak a word to the earth and to place in it what Yahuwah Sevaot has commanded me. 
And I saw him descend into the Holy of Holies and take from thence the veil and the holy ark and the mercy seat and the two tables and the holy raiment of the priests and the altar of incense and the 48 precious stones wherewith the priest was adorned and all the holy vessels of the tabernacle. And he spoke to the earth with a loud voice, Earth, 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 hear the word of El Elohim and receive what I commit to you and guard them until the last times so that when you are ordered, you may restore them so that strangers may not get possession of them. For the time comes when Yerushalayim also will be delivered for a time until it is said that it is again restored forever. And the earth opened its mouth and swallowed them up. Okay, so there we're told when the earth, or, or when the Ark of the Covenant was placed into the ground and where it was placed, that it is in Jerusalem. Okay, because there are, there are some out there who believe that the Ark of the Covenant is in Ethiopia. But we're told right here in Scripture, uh, so that strangers may not get possession of them. Okay? It also says, receive what I commit to you and guard them until the last times. Okay? So I think that this is a very powerful confirmation in Scripture that Ron Wyatt did indeed find the Ark of the Covenant where he said he found it, because it makes sense that it would be beneath the site of the crucifixion, okay, in Jerusalem instead of anywhere else, all right? So, also, uh, where it reads, so that strangers may not get possession of them, um, there was a story that, that I listened to Mr. Wyatt's son speak about this, where there was an incident where um, some sort of governmental body, maybe it might have been the Israeli Antiquities Division, uh, sent six men in to go hunt for the Ark of the Covenant. And this was after he had found it. So presumably this was sometime in the 80s. And they were all stricken dead. Okay, All six of them died in the cave system looking for this. And Ron happened to be in Israel at the time. They contacted him to get him to go out and retrieve the bodies out of there because they knew that he was allowed, for lack of a better way to put it, to go in near the Ark of the Covenant because it became apparent at that point that if the Father had not appointed someone to go near the Holy Ark, then they were stricken dead. So I imagine that that was a little bit of a macabre experience for Mr. Wyatt, but I just think that that's interesting to share. Um, now also, as far as the blood being on the lid of atonement, okay, you know, I was not aware of any particular prophecy in the word regarding that. I mean, you know, it's not that I doubted it. It makes perfect sense that that would be the case. However, um, a good friend and brother in Yahushua who has the channel C. Stephen Wall just made a video a few days ago, which is also on this channel. It's uh, part three of the Celestial Dance. And at the one hour and 18 minute mark in that video, he begins to talk about um, Daniel chapter nine, and in particular, uh, this very subject. So I'm going to share Daniel 9.24, because I think that this may be where it is prophesied about the blood, about Messiah's blood, you know, being on the mercy seat, okay? Daniel chapter 9, verse 24. Now, this is a prophecy about the coming of Messiah, his first coming. You know, some people mistake this for being a prophecy, an end-time prophecy, and maybe it is a dual prophecy, but it is a prophecy of his first advent nonetheless and his, his, uh, his crucifixion. Seventy weeks are determined upon thy people and upon the holy city to finish the transgression and to make an end of sins and to make reconciliation for iniquity and to bring in everlasting righteousness and to seal up the vision and prophecy and to anoint the most holy. And that is what I think may be the prophecy regarding the shedding of Messiah's blood and it landing on the mercy seat to anoint the most holy. 
Uh, now, again, back to that video, part three of the Celestial Dance, uh, l begin listening at the one hour and 18 minute mark. He discusses this for a few minutes up until about the uh, one hour and 22 or 23 minute mark and goes into a little more, bit more detail about this. Um, but I just think that that's something, you know, really interesting to bring out. So, you know, on the, on the note, you know, on the blood being on the mercy seat, in Leviticus chapter 16, verses 14 through 16, it tells us that the high priest at the time, who was Aaron, who was the brother of Moses, that uh, he was to take the blood of animals and to sprinkle it on the lid of atonement, or the mercy seat, to make atonement for the children of Israel. Yahushua, who is now our high priest, and the fulfillment of the Passover lamb, okay, has made atonement for his people in the same way, and his blood was found on the lid of atonement by Ron Wyatt in 1982. So, um, again, you know, listen to Ron's testimony on this very thing about how he had the blood analyzed and the 24 chromosomes. So, I want to bring out a couple verses here. Uh, you know, a as far as the work that Ron Wyatt did, I just want to bring out the verse, uh, this is in the book of Sirach, Sirach chapter 3, verse 19. Now, Sirach is also a book found in the Sefer. It is also found in the 1611 King James. Sirach chapter 3, verse 19. Many are in high place and of renown, but mysteries are revealed unto the meek. Now, if anyone's listened to Ron Wyatt, um, you know, I can tell you this, this man was the very embodiment of the meek and the humble. And that, that right there is a powerful witness, um, to the authenticity of his testimony and of his character. Now also just another verse to share here, Numbers chapter 12, verse three. And the man Moses was very humble more than all men who were on the face of the earth. Now I think right there. We're being told this is the reason why a man like Moses was chosen to be the administrator of Yahuwah's work in delivering his people out of Egypt and, you know, crossing through the Red Sea and leading them through the wilderness and taking care of them. So I just want to bring that out. Uh, please check out the book of Second Baruch. And thanks for listening.